Isn't it good to remember that there's sunshine after the storm? Hi, I'm Dr. Laverne Tolford. Each week, we make Sunday School simple with an easy to understand format. The text for you students of the word and teaching tips for those of you who teach. This video covers the text. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, thank you for being with us in the storms of life. Help us not to fear, to take courage, and keep looking up. And we thank you. There's sunshine after the storm. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, doesn't it seem that when we're involved in ministry, everything in our life seems to go haywire. Things just go wrong. <laughs> and it may be to distract us, to keep us from doing what God has called us to do. And so no matter what the storm in our lives, let's persevere, let's be faithful, and let's not be afraid and give up because God is with us. And that's what we're going to talk about today as we are continuing the fall quarter, which explores what it means to have a living faith. Today's Bible study guide examines Paul's journey sailing to Rome. We'll look into the mirror of God's Word by discussing what's important to know, cognitive, feel, effective, and do, psychomotor. Let's begin our lesson with our first set of verses from Acts chapter 27, verses 1 and 2, and a reading from the New Living Translation. When the time came, we set sail for Italy. Paul and several other prisoners were placed in the custody of a Roman officer named Julius, a captain of the Imperial Regiment. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was also with us. We left on a ship whose home port was Adramidium on the northwest coast of the province of Asia. It was scheduled to make several stops at ports along the coasts of the province. The key point is calm before the storm. Paul was arrested for preaching the gospel in Jerusalem, so he exercised his right as a Roman citizen to have his trial before Caesar. This meant taking a ship to Rome. Paul warned Julius the centurion guarding the prisoners that there would be a great loss of life because of a storm, but Julius ignored his warning. The ship encountered what seemed to be a hurricane. When they had given up hope and were afraid of dying, Paul encouraged them by sharing a vision in which an angel told him that no one on board would die. However, Paul warned that despite the encouraging news, they would be shipwrecked. This background and context helps us better understand today's lesson so we can apply it to our lives. <laughs> well, let's read our next set of verses, which is Acts chapter 27, verses 33 through 38, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Just as day was dawning, Paul urged everyone to eat. You have been so worried that you haven't touched food for two weeks, he said. Please, eat something now for your own good, for not a hair of your heads will perish. Then he took some bread, gave thanks to God before them all, and broke off a piece and ate it. Then everyone was encouraged and began to eat. All 276 of us who were on board. After eating, the crew lightened the ship further by throwing the cargo of the wheat overboard. The key point is calm in the storm. How did Paul remain so calm? In faith, Paul called on God during the crisis and God answered by sending a heavenly messenger. Initially, Paul sensed prophetically that people might die and they would lose the ship. However, God in his mercy sent an angel to strengthen Paul and to deliver a divine message. Everyone would be saved. 
Paul and all the others on board the ship did not eat for two weeks, but God kept them alive. They broke their self-imposed fast by eating bread. Let's read our final set of verses, which is Acts chapter 27, verses 39 through 44, again, in the New Living Translation. When morning dawned, they didn't recognize the coastline, but they saw a bay with a beach and wondered if they could get to shore by running the ship aground. So they cut off the anchors and left them in the sea. Then they lowered the rudders, raised the foresail, and headed toward shore. But they hit a shoal and ran the ship aground too soon. The bow of the ship stuck fast while the stern was repeatedly smashed by the force of the waves and began to break apart. The soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners to make sure they didn't swim ashore and escape. But the commanding officer wanted to spare Paul, so he didn't let them carry out their plan. Then he ordered all who could swim to jump overboard first and make for land. The others held onto planks or debris from the broken ship, so everyone escaped safely to shore. The key point is saved. Wasn't that an action-packed set of verses that we just read? Oh my. <laughs> the men navigate the ship near the shore, but the ship is destroyed by the fierce waves. The soldiers wanted to escape in lifeboats and kill the prisoners, but the commanding officer protecting everyone demanded that they do not carry out their plan because he wanted to save Paul. The prisoners had to swim the best they could to make it to shore, and the others, those who couldn't swim, had to go and hang on to planks or debris from the ship. But everyone was safe. Oh my, what a lesson. That's what's important to know. How should we feel in response to today's lesson? We should appreciate how our relationship with God helps us cope in a crisis. Panicking does not make the storm go away. Neither does it diminish nor stop the storm. On a ship in the middle of the sea in a terrible hurricane, the 276 people on board must have been terrified. But Paul remained calm because he heard God's promise and he helped others to trust God and not panic. We too will experience storms in our lives. A storm is unexpected and it turns our world upside down. When everything is shaking and it feels like we're going to fall apart, remember God's faithfulness. God's promise is his word. That's how we should feel. What should we do with what we've just learned? We should witness to others about relying on God's strength whenever we face a crisis. And it doesn't get any more simple than that. Paul was confident to tell everyone else what the angel told him. This is called encouragement. So let's encourage one another with our testimonies that will help them weather the storms of life. That's our scripture made simple. Do you remember our key points? Calm before the storm, calm in the storm, and safe. <laughs> There will be storms in our lives, and there will be rough sailing at times, but let's not panic. Let's remember that Jesus is with us. It's an honor for me to share with you today. I invite you to join us on PreceptsDigital.com where you'll find additional resources such as teaching tips, the word made simple, videos, and so much more. Plus, you'll join others, a community of believers who are studying and teaching God's Word. Won't you join me on Precepts? I look forward to seeing you there. 
Let's close the lesson with our keep in mind verse. The others held on to planks or debris from the broken ship, so everyone escapes safely to shore. And that's Acts chapter 27, verse 44, New Living Translation. Child of God, there will be storms in our lives, but let's continue to rely on God's strength whenever we face a crisis. And let's remember that Christ is with us. Have a great week.